In this video, I'm going to cover the basic ideas of supply and demand to try to give you the beginnings of a working knowledge of what it's all about. And every textbook and every instructor describes these ideas slightly differently. I try to boil it down into a way that's, uh, I don't know, as simple as we can possibly make it. Demand, I, in my gut, in my, in my head, I always try to remember that no matter what kind of technical definitions of demand might be out there, really, when you think about demand, we're talking about some sort of way of represent, representing, some kind of representation of the quantities people are willing and able to buy at various prices. And a key part of this definition is that demand is a lot of quantities. It's a relationship, and it's some way of writing down or, or describing the relationship between the quantities people want to buy at several different prices. And I'll emphasize why that's important in a minute. And supply, similarly, is from the seller's side. We want to separate consumers and people buying from what's going on in the head of the sellers and the people selling. And through the interaction of these two different groups with their two different ways of thinking about what's going on, we want to see what the result is from the interaction of the two. And so supply is very similarly a representation of the quantities people are willing to sell, willing and able to sell at various prices. Let's make this a little bit more concrete. Let's suppose we're talking about my demand, my personal demand at this moment, for some food product like pizza. And so one way to represent my demand for pizza would be to list some prices and some quantities here that I might buy at these different prices and quantities. So for example, I might say, you know, I'm pretty hungry, but if the price of pizza was $10, I would buy none. I'm just not that hungry. And here I'm thinking about $10 for one slice, not for an entire pizza. Uh, and I might tell you that at $8, um, I might be willing to buy one slice. And at $6, I might be willing to buy two slices. And at 4 I might be willing to buy three, etc. And uh, at $2, I might be willing to buy... Um, four, and if pizza was free, I might be willing to eat uh, five slices. So these are the amounts that I'm willing and able to buy and eat at these various prices. Now, this way of representing demand we call a demand schedule. Schedule is just a fancy word for a table. <clears throat> now, we could graph these points and then we'd have a demand curve or a demand line. Let me graph these and then come back in a second. Okay, so I graphed these prices and quantities, and the convention has been in economics ever since the 1800s that we put the prices on the y-axis and we put the quantities on the x-axis, although this is inconvenient sometimes depending on what you're doing. This is the way economists have agreed that we're going to make uh, demand curves or demand graphs. So here we just graph that at a price of $10, the quantity is zero. And if the price was zero, the quantity I would eat would be five. This is just basically what I, what I told you before. And so the table and the graph represent exactly the same information. It's just sometimes it's easier to work with graphs instead of tables. Now we could also represent this exact same information as an equation, and so we could have a demand equation, and we could write it this way if we wanted to. Just the equation of this line would be the y-intercept is 10, so when the x, is, x uh, value quantity is 0, the price is 10. And sometimes we call this $10 the choke price. The choke price just means that at what price does the amount people want choke off and go to zero. So in this case it would be ten dollars. And so we could write this equation this way that uh, the price equals ten minus two times q. This just 
says that the y-intercept is 10, the slope is minus 2, because we go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, etc. So any, any of these three ways of representing my demand convey exactly the same information. But again, it's very important to point out that when we say demand, <clears throat> we are not speaking of one quantity. So for example, if I go to a store today and the price is $4 and the quantity is, uh, that I will buy is 3 we don't ever want to say that my demand for pizza is 3. That's not true. We just don't use the words this way. The demand for pizza, my demand for pizza is the entire table. Or it's this entire equation. Or it's this entire line. It's, it's just not correct the way economists use the word demand. It's not correct to say that this one red point here is my demand because it's, that's ignoring the fact that demand is a relationship between a lot of different prices and a lot of different quantities. When we talk about demand changing, well, let me first back, let me back up for a second. So in, instead of calling this number three my demand, we call that number three my quantity demanded at a price of four. So we would call it the quantity demanded at uh, four dollars uh, equals three, for example. We could say, so if I saw a price of four dollars, I would buy three. But if I saw a, pr a price of $2, my quantity demanded would be 4. So if we go from one row in the table, say this row, and the only thing that has happened is there's a sale on pizza, and now the price is lower, the price is 2, then the language we would say is, we'd, we'd use the words, my quantity demanded has changed from 3 to 4. My quantity demanded has increased but my demand has not increased. I know this is infuriating for everybody when they first learn uh, economics and supply and demand, but if you say that demand has changed, what, what we hear as economists is you're not saying that we've moved from one point to another along the same demand. If you tell me that demand has changed, what you're telling me is that the entire relationship has changed. So let me draw another another line in here so we can picture this. So I've drawn a new purple line here. And so if, if we hear the words demand has changed, that means that the entire table's changed or the equation has changed or in a graph, what you're, what you're telling us, or at least what we're hearing is that the entire line has moved somehow. And if the entire line moves to the right, we call that an increase in demand. If the entire line moves to the left, we call that a decrease in demand. Well, let's, let's see why that would be. For example, what could change demand? Well, for example, what could happen is that I might be walking along and I find some money lying on the ground. And so here's my new demand right here. After I find the money, I might say, well, now at a price of $10, I might buy one piece of pizza. And now at $8, now that I'm richer, I might buy two pieces of pizza. And three, four, five, six, etc. This new demand here is representing something other than the price changing. Something fundamental about me has changed. I am richer. Now my entire table is different. Instead of these quantities at these prices, now the entire table, the entire relationship has changed. So let's read the definition again. Demand is a representation of the quantities people are willing to buy at various prices. If the quantities have changed at the same prices, then this thing, this demand, has changed. So we could graph this new demand. Let me move this purple line roughly so uh, that this might be what we're talking about now. So now at a price of 10, I'd buy 1, right? So at a price of 10, now this quantity would be 1. At a price of 8, now I'd buy 
2, so quantities down here on the x-axis. So the entire line has shift to this, shifted to this new demand. Now we could also look at uh, what would happen to this equation. Well, this is the new equation. Let me uh, extend this line up here. This new equation would be P equals 12 minus 2Q. Why? Well, because at a price of 12, this line looks like I would buy none. But if we plug in a quantity of 1 here, price equals 12 minus 2 times 1, that would give us 10. $10 at a quantity of 1, $8 at a quantity of 2. You can verify that this new equation would correspond to these quantities with these prices and this line. So to reiterate, this is one of the most confusing and most important things we want you to learn about the modeling uh, and what we mean when we say demand. Demand is an entire relationship of quantities and prices and if the only thing that's changing is price, then we're moving along a demand curve. And we don't say demand changed, we say quantity demanded changed. If demand changes, that means something fundamental has happened, like your income went up. Or, on the opposite case, we could, your income could go down, and that could decrease your demand. A decrease in demand is going to be a move to the left. An increase in demand will be in a shift to the right. Um, also, in an equation, uh, you can see that you can, you can increase demand two ways with an equation. You can increase the y-intercept, which uh, corresponds to shifting this line to the right. Or another way that you could increase demand with a line is just to decrease the slope. That's kind of moving, moving things to the right. Uh, in my classes, usually we'll stick most of the time with shifting the, the curve by changing the y-intercept, something like this. Now, the same lessons we just talked about for demand apply also to supply. We can have a table representing prices and quantities for supply. And I'll make a, a, another video since this one's getting a little long, I'll make another video talking briefly about supply, and then we'll put the two together.